Well, you're going to see maybe one of the coolest and also definitely the scariest advancements in modern military technology. It's a fighter jet with deadly missiles, no cockpit, no pilot, and no remote control. Is this something we need or are we building the next Skynet? Let's jump into it. Do you see a world where machines are fighting our battles for us? Oh, absolutely. It's already happening. Our story this week is about Palmer Lucky. He is the billionaire founder of Andrel. Shows up to a TV interview dressed like he's going to take your tickets at an arcade, giving me like GTA, Doomsday vibes. I don't like it already. If you're gonna be like behind a company that builds things, that kills people, take it a little seriously, please. It can use artificial that. intelligence for surveillance or to identify, select, and engaged targets. No operator Whoa. needed. That was cool. That was. Dang. It's, just... it's a like a claymore. No operator needed. Boom! A claymore attached to a drone. That's crazy. Sad for the drone. Really cool. Really scary. Imagine that thing coming after you. It's a scary idea, but I mean, that's the world we live in. I'd say it's a lot scarier, for example, to imagine a weapon system that doesn't have any level of intelligence at all. There's no moral high ground in making a landmine that can't tell the difference between a school bus full of children and Russian armor. It's not a question between smart weapons and no weapons. It's a question between smart weapons and dumb weapons. I'll give him a point there. Something that can target more accurately who the enemy is versus something that has no discernment whatsoever. It could kill people on your own side. It could kill women and children. There are lots of people who go, oh, AI, I don't know. I don't trust it. It's going to go rogue. I would say that it is something to be aware of, but in the grand scheme of things, things to be afraid of, there's things that I'm much more terrified of. I don't know about you. Look, AI's just been very dumb in a lot of use cases like Siri, Google. Yes, it could be extremely helpful. I've got my lights on Google, for example, and when I ask Google to turn the lights on, 30 to 40% of the time, it gets it wrong. It'll play like staying alive on Spotify when I ask for putting the lights on full blast. I hope their systems are a lot more advanced. Will it go rogue or not? We'll talk about that more in a bit. Right now, there's so many weapon systems that require manning. You know, if I can have one guy commanding and controlling 100 aircraft, that's a lot easier than having to have a pilot in every single one, and it puts a lot fewer American lives at risk. So one guy controlling a swarm of 100 fighter jets. And look at this thing, wow. One concern with this is what if the government went against us in the U.S.? That's a big thing, always not wanting to be subject of the government. What if they went against us and, you know, with their small numbers controlling 100 of these aircrafts per one person, we're toast. There's no possible way we could fight tyranny if that's the case. This is the first autonomous fighter jet. This is small for a fighter jet. If you see other fighter jets up close, F-16, 18, F-35, they are massive, so much larger than you would expect them to be. You see them in the movies and pictures, but in real life, they are huge. You got the, the pilot right there, and then the rest of the aircraft is so big. And these are very large, serious aircraft designed wow. to do air-to-air -air combat. This system is designed to use software to autonomously control it and work with a manned quarterback sitting in a fighter jet alongside it, sitting in an F-35 or something like that. These are first and foremost about protecting pilots' lives. These fly out ahead of manned fighters, and they're able to find the enemy first, be able to engage the enemy well before a manned fighter has to be seen or is in range. The logic is definitely sound on that before you send a human in there where there's possibly air-to-air -air missiles, you've got SAMs, things that could kill the human. Send out the AI fighter jets first. If somebody's gonna go down, let it be the robots and not the humans. How will this fly compared to a human pilot? This is some FPV drone racing. The one on the left controlled by human and the right AI. Let's check it out. AI is just kicking ass right now. Flying these drones is, is extremely challenging. It requires so much reaction time, speed. Just nuts, here we go.
The reaction time of a human, 200 milliseconds from time it sees something of a AI, a machine, robot sensors could be less than milliseconds. We're talking a thousand hertz sometimes, a thousand processes, decisions made per second with one of these computers. Yes, absolutely, it could outfly a human pilot. Whether they've achieved that or not, we don't know yet. So what happens if the AI aircraft makes a mistake? It thinks it's targeting the enemy, but it actually shoots down a Cessna carrying a husband, wife, and their three children. Yes, it's gonna happen. It's gonna make some mistake. This is similar to the argument for Tesla full self-driving. Then a white Tesla put on its left blinker, moves into the left lane and stops, causing the car behind it to crash into it, followed by six more cars. One vehicle even gets pushed up against the wall of the bridge. Tesla full self-driving has gotten some heat because it has crashed. People have died in the crashes, fatal crashes. That's serious stuff. But the argument from Tesla is that yes, that happens. But if you look at all the data, it's actually safer than human drivers. Tesla claims there's one crash for every 7.6 million full self-driving miles, where the national average is one crash for every 650,000 miles. So if Tesla's claims are accurate, it's actually 11 times safer than human drivers. And that could possibly be the case as well with the AI fighter jet. It could be 10 times safer than a human pilot. The goal of these systems is to be mass producible. And we tried to eliminate really every bottleneck we could find around what makes an aircraft hard to produce. Really simple things that we've been able to do are design the landing gear, for example, instead of using very exquisite big aircraft landing gear, which are hard to produce, really limited supply. We designed it so it can be built in any machine shop in America. I like this. I like what he's talking about. This is a big problem with the U.S. government, U.S. military spending. The military industrial complex has been absolutely wild. You see these deals where government contractors are billing us like $10,000 for a single screw that goes on an aircraft. Obviously, there's a lot of corruption involved with that. There's no doubt there's loads of corruption in the U.S. government. So it's good to see that at least in this video, the founder is talking about making it as smartly as possible, off-the-shelf parts, things that you can easily make. I do like that. Fury is scheduled to take its first test flight this summer. The Air Force hopes to have CCAs fully operational before the end of this decade. It's an entirely new way of fighting. That is absolutely insane to think about. Now, the big question here is why is anybody building AI fighter jets? Haven't you seen Terminator, dude? Don't you know what happens? And the answer is we have no choice. China's doing it. Russia is doing it. Other countries who may not have our best interests in mind are going to be doing it. It's very similar to nuclear bombs during the Cold War. If another country is building a lot of nuclear bombs, we got to build them too, or else we could be subject to their totalitarian regime. As Americans for our own freedom and safety, we feel like we can't be outgunned. We don't want to have a knife at the gunfight. And so if other countries are going to build AI fighter jets, we better have the best damn one. And that's a very scary thought because these are killer weapons controlled by AI, not humans. If they decide to go off the rails one day, that could be it for the entire human race. And it's a scary thought. So I'll leave this question to you. Are we building the most advanced military defense technology ever, or are we writing the next chapter in our own self-destruction? Let me know in the comments, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.